What a day. What a day. Here in the end times. This is your old wet, soggy rat. Doomsday prophet here. In the appropriately named rainforest in paradise in St. Croix Virgin Islands, we have made it somehow without washing down the hill. <sighs> we have somehow slogged into Tuesday morning. I believe it's January 5th, 2016. Good God Almighty, what I have gone through the past few days, but I have, it looks to be maybe a 20 minute break in the cloud, so it being a Tuesday, I'm going to do what I always do, is bring you my weekly wacky conspiracy roundup rant, and I uh, hate to disappoint any, uh, any of you hoping I was going to insult my intelligence and yours by talking about those goddamn redneck, dumb, ignorant, redneck planet eaters out there in, in Oregon this week. <coughs> I might be forced to, uh, to comment on that in a couple of days, but right now I want to turn your attention on to uh, this fellow named James Corbett, this whack job named James Corbett. I think I might have mentioned this fellow, uh, this uh, Alex Jones ass-licking, clueless moron, conspiracy wacko uh, on YouTube, James Corbett. Good God Almighty, this guy, if you don't know this jerk, th this smug, arrogant little prick, uh, James Corbett is kind of like the antithesis of Alex Jones, where Alex Jones is a fat ass, what's that word, uh, that Valhalla's a bloviating, while Alex Jones is a fat ass, ignorant, bloviating, just, a, well, you know what Alex Jones is, you know as well as me, but James Corbett kind of brings the nerd angle into the Alex Jones camp. He's one of these, he looks like one of these guys, probably, you know, you, we all knew these guys in high school, uh, the, the, these goddamn little nerds. He, he just want to go punch in the face. He just begs to have like a pie thrown in his face. But anyway, uh, let's look at some, uh, let's go on to Let's go on to Jimmy Boy's Corbett Report page 127,668 subscribers to this idiot. Here is the global warming pause explained. Here's must watch climatologist breaks the silence on global warming. Here is climate change is unfalsifiable woo woo pseudoscience. Here's one what is the average global temperature? Here is won't someone think of the polar bears? Here is lies, damned lies, and global warming statistics. Here is a message to the environmental movement. Uh, talking about how the environment, that any environmentalist who believes in global warming or overpopulation has been, has been co-opted and sold down the river by the New World Order. So we have that message to the environmental movement. Let's see. I think you, uh, I, I think you get my drift on what James Corbett is about, bringing you the nerd 
uh, aspect to global warming and overpopulation denial. So, uh, anyway, but I want that this rant is not about James Corbett so much as it is about this documentary, and I am so sorry I cannot remember which one of my Alert Tribes members sent me this video called How Big Oil Conquered the World. How Big Oil Conquered the World came out a couple of weeks ago, racked up 86,000 views uh, with 2,738 thumbs up and 22 thumbs down. How Big Oil Conquered the World so this, uh, one of my tribe's members recommending this uh, video to me. So it's, it's an hour, what is it, an hour and 11 minutes? Yes, an hour and 11 minutes. I watched every second of this uh, hour and 11 minutes. <coughs> and, it, and it is an excellent video, and I do recommend it. I do heartily recommend how Big Oil Conquered the World, but I don't recommend it uh, as any sort of intelligent explanation on how Big Oil conquered the world, but I do recommend it as an absolute classic textbook, textbook example uh, of probing into the conspiratard clueless moron brain. If you, like me, are just fascinated by conspiracy wackos and clueless morons, this is the entire movement is distilled into this one documentary. Uh, I cannot think of, I mean, Alex Jones has never uh, compose such a mishmash of, uh, uh, of, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but what it, what it does, this, this excellent documentary, uh, it peek into the, uh, conspirator brain is, it's a perfect example of, of how these, cons uh, conspiratards are not, are not completely clueless morons. I mean, y you know, they have the they they have the ability to use discernment and critical thinking about level with a cockroach, and so they are able to dig about as deep into uh, shit going on on this planet. Uh, dig about as deep as a cockroach. To come up with their ideas, and so what this is, what this documentary, and I use that term loosely, does so well, it 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 explores unintentionally, of course, the subject of how these conspiratards, when they start to wake up, what is going on on this planet, which is a good thing, uh, that that as so many conspiratards do, and I have to admit that I've been a little bit guilty of this myself uh, in the past till, uh, uh, till I corrected some of this stuff, was how they get it uh, on a very surface level, but the more, the more they dig down into these rabbit holes, all of these various conspiratard rabbit holes, that the more they open their minds that they reach a certain point where their brains fall out of their heads. And, and, and there is nowhere that this is better uh, demonstrated. So obviously I, I, I'm going to recommend that if you are a student of conspiratards and clueless morons that you watch every minute of this. So this is, this is just kind of a, a synopsis uh, of how this uh, of how this documentary about big oil plays out. Well, the first half of it is pretty much just an unbridled 
hatchet job uh, on one of the most evil planet eaters in the history of humanity, John D. Rockefeller. Good God Almighty. Yeah, it, it takes a real genius to understand that J.D. Rockefeller is, is one of the most evil sons of bitches ever to inhabit planet Earth. And, and they make a good case for that. Uh, they need, if you need to spend 30 minutes convincing yourself that J.D. Rockefeller was an evil son of a bitch. So they make that point quite clear. Yes, and I was cheering them on during the first half of the video. How many ways can you say J.D. Rockefeller is an evil son of a bitch? So they talk about the conspiracy theory of how Rockefeller and, and, and you know, and his band of henchmen, how they buried biofuels that uh, that whole conspiracy interestingly enough this Corbett guy he must have some anti marijuana agenda or something he never talks about while he's explaining uh, the whole reason that we have fossil fuels today instead of biofuels he, he never mentions industrial hemp anywhere in it. Uh, but anyway, w without mentioning industrial hemp, talking about this whole conspiracy theory uh, about how fossil fuels became the fuel of choice thanks to J.D. Rockefeller, uh, without mentioning industrial hemp is like having a rant about McDonald's without ever mentioning the word hamburger. But anyway, uh, he, he does do a pretty good job on that, uh, in that conspiracy theory. Of course, he nails it about that very true, wacky conspiracy theory about how Standard Oil, uh, in league with Goodyear Tire Company, went around buying up all of the streetcars all over this country and I believe in when was it the 30s and 40s I think the 1940s when they went around this country bought up all of the electric streetcars running on rails and ripped up the the streetcars so that they could power them with uh, fossil with gasoline and run them on Goodyear tires uh, spot-on analysis of that and so then as it I it's been a week since I watched this guy so my my brain is already getting a little rusty I I'm just trying to touch on some of the high spots so then he he starts moving in it and so everything the first half of the uh, the, the first half of the story which does concentrate somewhat on big oil uh, it is pretty spot on, but but I was noticing this was before I, I remembered who James Corbett was. I was just noticing, listening this into this whole story about big oil, that never did he mention all of the environmental carnage associated with big oil. Everything about fossil fuels from from the goddamn getting it out of the ground to the burning of it, everything in between. He talked uh, about all of the various... Uh, he, he, he talked about pretty much every aspect of big oil and fossil fuels, uh, except the biggest one of all, which was that big oil more than anything else is responsible for the collapse of this planet and uh, so then he, but he kind of leaves big oil behind and then he starts going in to all of these other conspiracy theories connecting the dots as they need to be connected between he spends a little while on connecting the dots between big oil and the banksters behind it all about uh, how 
they are two peas out of the same pod about how they joined forces in the early 20th, early 20th century to uh, control the planet. Talks about that for a while. And I can't remember a couple of smaller ones. Then he gets, then things start getting a little bit weird. Where he, so now he's up to 1973, and he makes the argument, the, the wacky conspiracy argument, he talks about the oil embargo, the OPEC oil embargo of 1973. And he gives the mainstream media version of how that went down. And then he brings out his bullshit detector button and says anyone who believes that the, that the 1973 oil embargo was orchestrated by OPEC has their head up their ass. And then he, he brings up the Bilderbergers <coughs> and claiming that it was the Bilderbergers uh, <coughs> namely Henry Kissinger that orchestrated that it was the Bilderbergers uh, with Henry Kissinger at the helm that orchestrated the the fake oil embargo of 19th century and, and I don't know about this one guys I, I have to admit in all of my digging around these wacky conspiracy theories this was this was a new one, but he has the documents. He has the documents. Uh, so, oh, I'm sorry. Before before he got to that one, he spent quite a bit of time uh, about how J. D. Rockefeller and the Rockefeller Institute about how they are the reason for the dumbing down of American education. Uh, some of that which I believe he spent quite a bit of time about how Rockefeller through the Rockefeller Institution took down uh, natural medicine, herbal medicine and all that and replaced it with big pharma, how it was J.D. Rockefeller uh, and the banksters and all of these guys, how they hatched big pharma, which of course is virtually 100% dependent uh, on fossil fuels. And then, and then he went through the oil embargo, and then he connected the dots between uh, how big oil profited from uh, the Green Revolution, ramping up uh, all of these, uh, the fossil fuels used in big agriculture and close to the very end of the thing he, he he brings Monsanto into it trying to connect the dots between J.D. Rockefeller and Monsanto and genetic engineering and GMOs and all of that and so you know the, the documentary uh, it is not entirely clueless, uh, but where towards the end, more and more, he just makes it a statement of fact that this is one of the one of the canons, the cardinals. Uh, what what word am I thinking of? Uh, is it canons uh, of the New World Order movement that? He's just uh, starts making the stating the fact that these goddamn planet eaters, although he he says nothing about nowhere does he talk about the environmental carnage of all of this stuff. Uh, that is nowhere mentioned in over an hour. The, uh, the environmental fallout from J.D. Rockefeller, the banksters, Monsanto, and all of this. Uh, but, but he talks, but he starts making the contention more and more that, that you cannot explain these guys, these evil sons of bitches, in terms of money, that they're already 
so goddamn rich. They're all a bunch of goddamn, not even 1% are billionaires. They're, they're the top 100th of 1% billionaires. And uh, that, you, that, it doesn't make any sense. That hell, they own the printing presses, uh, the money printing presses, for God's sake. So you can't explain it. So obviously there's got to be another explanation for what these, what he calls the oligarchs. I do like that term. I wish I had thought of it. The oligarchs. What are the oligarchs really up to? And uh, I'm going to, I don't know, it's probably not going to play. I'm going to, so the last five minutes of this story, he reaches the conclusion. So what is, what was J.D. Rockefeller, from J.D. Rockefeller to Monsanto, what is the real reason, since it's obviously not money anymore, it's beyond that, what is the reason that they are, uh, that they are, that just let, let me try to play this. It's probably going to run out after a few seconds, and I'll have to tell you, but we're going to try to play a couple of minutes of the, uh, of the conclusion to how big oil conquered the world. Hopefully this will get two minutes out of it. Take it away, Mr. Corbett, and tell us what the end game of J.D. Rockefeller is all about. From oil well to gas pump, farm to fork, hospital to pharmaceutical, drill rig to dollar bill, there was almost no aspect of society that was not under their control. But the oligarchs are not done yet. Their next project, launched in the late 20th century, is almost too ambitious to be comprehended. It is not about oil. It is not about money. It is about the monopolization of life itself. They have spent decades preparing the path for this takeover and marshaled their mind-boggling resources in service of the task. And the vast majority of the world's population, still playing the shell game that the oligarchs perfected and abandoned long ago, are about to fall right into their hands yet again. Oh, yeah. Gentlemen, the battle against climate change is surely the most defining and pivotal challenge of our times. Even in a world full of daunting perils and crises, it is hard to imagine anything that poses a greater challenge and opportunity for humanity. The negative impact of population growth on all of our planetary ecosystems is becoming appallingly evident. David Rockefeller. Unequivocally true and that, that there is a price to carbon in their future. What do you see as the biggest challenges in, in conservation? Uh, the, the growing human population. Because if where we are, there's nothing else. We have to start spending money um, you know, fast on the solutions that we have in hand to try and help these countries which are already seeing the effects of climate change today and seeing the effects of our, our consumption, basically. David Rothschild, thank you so much for joining us here on Bloomberg. Down in Pennsylvania, to be continued. So there you go. You heard it from Mr. Corbett himself. The end game, the double end game of the New World Order is a carbon tax. It is the oligarchs. It is the fossil fuel companies. The fossil fuel companies who invented the climate change hoax. There you go! It is John D. Rockefeller and the oil men who invented the great hoax of climate change so they could institute a carbon tax. But of course, the bigger, uh, even bigger than the climate change hoax is the end game of it all, which is the granddaddy, most 
unadulterated horseshit conspiracy theory of them all, the umbrella wacko horseshit conspiracy, and that is that the end game of the New World Order, which is the global industrial economy, is to depopulate this planet by 90%. There you go. So what he what he fails to mention in, in all his railing about J.D. Rockefeller and oil uh, and fossil fuels and pharmaceuticals and genetic modif genetically modifying crops, he he just fails to mention that every one of these has. Uh, Every one of them uh, is the main reason that there are 7 billion people on the planet. John D. Rockefeller, my guess is more than, thanks to John D. Rockefeller, uh, more than any human being in history has done more to overpopulate this planet than any one single individual. It is the oil men and big pharma and big ag that have allowed th th this planet to be completely overrun uh, with humans. And it's not surprising that the grandchildren uh, of, of this first generation of Rockefellers and Rothschilds understand this better than anybody. You know? Uh, to completely, you know, how many times do I have, to, have I had this broken record rant? The global industrial economy, the new world order, the oil men, the big pharma men, the big ag men, this entire planet eating uh, global industrial economy that is taking down this planet is 100% dependent on an ever-growing number of consumers, just sheer number of consumers, consuming more and more stuff per capita. It, it, you know, it's what, they, it's what they live off of for the new world order, for the global industrial economy represented by everybody from Exxon to Monsanto to depopulate this planet is absolutely absurd on the face of it. They, the last people on this planet who want to depopulate this planet by 90% are the goddamn new world order. You know, this is just this little inconvenient truth. You, you know, and, and, and I love it, and you see this all the time, this little game of, of putting uh, the third, I think it's the third generation Rockefellers and Rothschilds uh, talking about climate change and overpopulation and overconsumption threatening this planet. The idea being, see, see, there's a Rockefeller, uh, so so I guess that I am uh, I I'm one of these. Actually, if you Google my name, Hambone Littletail, you will find out that I am a counterintelligence professional, disseminating New World Order depopulation agenda propaganda. So uh, yeah, uh, they can find some people with the last name of Rockefeller and Rothschilds uh, who understand probably better than anybody else what the biggest problem facing this planet is. Well, the immediate one is climate change, but uh, which is one more byproduct of overpopulation and overconsumption. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's like putting, putting the grandson of the guy who invented Hershey bars uh, up in front of the camera eating a Hershey bar and, and saying this Hershey bar tastes pretty good. Y you know? <laughs> you 
Anyway, guys, all of this talk about Hershey bars is getting me hungry, and I need to go find some chocolate-covered almonds before the next storm hits. But anyway, just one more time for anybody wanting to understand the, the mind of a clueless moron conspirator and, and how opening your mind too widely can make your brain fall out of your head, I highly recommend James Corbett's new documentary, How Big Oil Conquered the World. Which, uh, which will never mention how big oil destroyed the world. So for this week's uh, wacky conspiracy rant of the week, bye guys.